That's Spot Mini. He'll be back in a little while. I I love building robots. And my long-term goal is to build robots that can do what people and animals do. And there's three things in particular uh, that we're interested in. One is balance and dynamic mobility. The second one is mobile manipulation. And the third one is mobile perception. So dynamic mobility and balance. I'm going to do a demo for you. I'm standing here balancing. I can see you're not very impressed. OK, how about now? How about now? Those simple capabilities mean that people can go almost anywhere on Earth on any kind of terrain. And uh, we want to capture that for robots. What about manipulation? I'm holding this clicker in my hand. I'm not even looking at it. And I can manipulate it without any problem. But even more important, I can move my body while I hold the manipulator, the, uh, the clicker, uh, and stabilize and coordinate my body. And I can even walk around. And that means that I can move around in the world and expand the range of my arms and my hands and really be able to handle almost anything. So that's mobile manipulation. And all of you can do this. And third is perception. You know, I'm looking out of the room with over 1,000 people in it. And my amazing visual system can see every one of you. You're all stable in space, even when I move my head, even when I move around. That kind of mobile perception is really important for robots that are going to move and act out in the world. So I'm going to give you a little status report on where we are in developing robots toward these ends. This is um, the first three robots are all dynamically stabilized robots. This one goes back over a little over 10 years ago, Big Dog. And it's got a gyroscope that helps stabilize it. It's got uh, sensors and a com control computer. Here's a cheetah robot that's running with a galloping gait where it recycles its energy, it bounces on the ground, and it's computing all the time in order to keep itself stabilized and propelled. And here's a bigger robot that's got such good locomotion using its legs that it can go in deep snow. This is about 10 inches uh, deep, and it doesn't really have any trouble. This is Spot, a new generation of robot, just the uh, slightly older than the one that came out on stage. And we've been asking the question, you know, you've all heard about drone delivery. Can we deliver packages to your houses with drones? Well, what about plain old legged robot delivery? So we've been taking our robot to our employees' homes to see whether we could get in the various access ways. And believe me, in the Boston area, there's every manner of stairway, twists and turns. And so it's a real challenge. But we're doing very well, about 70% of the ways. And here's mobile manipulation, where we've put an arm on the robot, and it's finding its way through the door. Now, one of the important things about making autonomous robots is to make them not do exactly, just exactly what you say, but make them deal with the uh, uncertainty of what happens in the real world. So we have Steve there. One of the engineers is uh, giving the robot a hard time. And the fact that the programming s still tolerates all that disturbance, it does what it's supposed to. Here's another example where Eric is tugging on the robot as it goes up the stairs. And believe me, getting it to to do what it's supposed to do in those circumstances is a real challenge, but the result is something that's going to generalize and make robots much more autonomous than they would be otherwise. This is Atlas, a humanoid robot. Uh, it's, a, it's a third generation humanoid that we've been building. I'll tell you a little bit about the hardware design later. And we've been saying, how close to human levels of performance and speed could we get in an ordinary task like moving boxes around on a conveyor? And uh, you know we're getting up to about two-thirds of the speed that a human operates on average. And this robot is using both hands. It's using its body. It's stepping. So it's really an example of dynamic stability, mobile manipulation, and mobile perception. Here, uh, <laughs> we actually have two atlases. <laughs> Now, everything doesn't go exactly the way it's supposed to. <laughs> and 
And here's our latest robot. called Handle. Handle is interesting because it's sort of half like an animal and it's half something else with these leg-like leg things and wheels. It's got its arms on in kind of a, a funny way. But it really does some remarkable things. It can carry 400 pounds, uh, 100 pounds. It's probably going to lift more than that, but so far we've done 100. It's got some pretty good rough terrain capability, even though it has wheels. And uh, Handel loves to put on a show. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit of robot religion. A lot of people think that a robot is a machine where there's a computer that's telling it what to do. And the, and the computer is listening through its sensors. But that's really only half of the story. The real story is that the computer is on one side making suggestions to the robot, and on the other side are the physics of the world. And that physics involves gravity, friction, bouncing into things. And in order to have a successful robot, my religion is that you have to do a holistic design where you're designing the software, the hardware, and the behavior all at one time, and all these parts really intermesh and cooperate with each other. And when you get the perfect design, you get a real harmony between all those parts interacting with each other. So it's half software and half hardware, plus the behavior. We've done some work lately on the hardware, where we tried to go on the picture on the left is a conventional design, where you have parts that are all bolted together, conductors, tubes, connectors. And on the right is a more integrated thing. It's supposed to look like an anatomy drawing. And using the miracle of 3D printing, we're starting to build parts of robots that look a lot more like the anatomy of an animal. So that's an upper leg part that has hydraulic pathways, actuators, filters, all embedded, all printed as one piece. And the whole structure is developed with the knowledge of what the loads and behavior are going to be, which is available from data recorded from robots and simulations and things like that. So it's a data-driven hardware uh, design. And using processes like that, not only the upper leg, but some other things, we've gotten our robots to go from big, behemoth, bulky, slow, bad robots, that one on the right, weighing almost 400 pounds, down to uh, the one in the middle, which was just in the video, weighs about 190 pounds, just a little bit more than me. And we have a new one, which is working, but I'm not going to show it to you yet, on the left, which weighs just 165 pounds with all the same strength and capability. So these things are really getting better very quickly. So it's time to, um, for Spot to come back out, and we're going to demonstrate a little bit of mobility, dexterity, and perception. So this is Seth Davis, who's my uh, robot wrangler today, and he's giving Spot some general direction by steering it around, but all the coordination of the legs and the sensors is done by the robot's computers on board. The robot can walk with a, a number of different gates, it's got um, a gyro, or a solid-state gyro, an IMU on board. Um, obviously, it's got a battery and things like that. Now, one of the cool things about a legged robot is it's omnidirectional. In addition to going forward, it can go sideways. It can turn in place. And this robot's a little bit of a show-off. It loves to use its dynamic gates, like running. And it's got one more. <laughs> now, if it really a show-off, it would be hopping on one foot, but, you know. Now, the Spot has a set of cameras here, stereo cameras, and we have a feed up in the center. It's kind of dark out in the audience. But um, it's going to use those cameras in order to look at the terrain right in front of it while it goes over these uh, obstacles back here. Now, for this demo, Seth is steering but the robot's doing all its own terrain planning. This is a terrain map where uh, the data from the cameras is being developed in real time, showing the red spots, which are where it doesn't want to step, and the green spots are the good places. And here it's treating them like stepping stones, so it's trying to stay up on the blocks, and it adjusts its stride, and there's a ton of planning that has to go into an operation like that, and it does all that planning in real time 
where it adjusts the steps a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. Now we're going to change it into a different mode where it's just going to treat the, the uh, blocks like terrain and decide whether to step up or down um, as it goes. So this is using dynamic balance, dynamic uh, mobile perception, because it has to coordinate what it sees along with um, uh, how it's moving. Now, the other thing Spot has is a robot arm. Some of you may see that as a head and a neck, but believe me, it's an arm. And Seth is driving it around. Now, he's actually driving the hand, and the body is following. So the two are coordinated in the way I was talking about before, the way people can do that. And in fact, one of the cool things that Spock can do, we call chicken head mode, and it keeps its he head in one place in space, and it moves its body all around. There's a variation of this that's called twerking, but we're not going to use that today. So Spot, I'm feeling a little thirsty. Could you get me a soda? Now, for this demo, Seth is not using, uh, doing any driving. We have a LiDAR on the back of the robot, and it's using these props we put on the stage to localize itself. It's gone over to that location. Now it's using a camera that's in its hand to uh, find the uh, cup, picks it up. And again, Seth's not driving. So we planned out a path for it to go. It looked like it was going off the path. And now Seth's going to take over control again, because I'm uh, a little bit chicken about having it do this by itself. Thank you, Spot. So, Spot, how do you feel about having just finished your TED performance? <laughs> Me too. Thank you uh, all, and thanks to the team at Boston Dynamics who did all the hard work behind this. Mark, come back in the middle. Thank you so much. Come over here. I have questions. So, um, so you mentioned the UPS and the package delivery. What are the other applications that you see for your robots? You know, I think that uh, robots that have the capabilities I've been talking about are going to be incredibly useful. Uh, about a year ago, I went to Fukushima to see what the situation was there. And there's just a huge need for machines that can go into some of the dirty places and, uh, and help remediate that. Uh, I, think, I think it won't be too long until we have robots like this in our homes. And, uh, you know, one of the big needs is to take care of uh, the aging and, uh, and invalids. Uh, I think that um, it won't be too long till we're using robots to help take care of our parents, uh, or probably more likely have our children uh, help take care of us. Uh, and, and there's a bunch of other things. I, I think the sky's the limit. I mean, many of the ideas we haven't thought of yet, and people like uh, Will You will help us uh, think of new applications. So what about the, the dark side? What about like, the military? Are they, are they interested? Sure. Uh, the